Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you all are here with me today because I'm gonna show you my top three favorite exercises to do to help strengthen your baseball grip. Now, before we get started, I just wanna mention that I will refer to this as baseball grip, regular grip, uh, traditional grip, main grip. The only words you'll not hear me use are true grip, but technically, yes, this is the same thing as true grip. I personally do not like to use the terminology true grip when referring to this because I'm very aware of how terminology can subconsciously affect us. And for me, when I hear the words true grip, it insinuates that it's the only grip or it's the proper grip or it's the superior grip. And I like to keep any of that negativity away from my pole life because for me, a pole is supposed to be a positive place. So I like to use more positive terminology or more neutral terminology when those things are concerned, okay? So before we get started, make sure that your pole is nice and clean. If you have the option, have it on spin because we're going to be focusing on the grip itself, not necessarily you controlling that grip to rotate around the pole. So we're focusing strictly on the grip, so we want the pole to move with us if we have that option, all right? So always make sure that you're warmed up before you do any sort of strengthening or stretching type of exercises to make sure that your body's moving, flowing, blood is pumping, so you're less likely to injure yourself, okay? So first exercise, we're going to use our inside arm first. This is my left arm left arm high, shoulder down and back, chest lifted, engage your core, belly button to spine. And when I say engage your core, belly button to spine, what I'm meaning is you're going to tighten your core and flex it in such a way that it feels like you're preparing for someone to punch you in the gut. That's probably the easiest way for me to explain what that kind of engagement feels like. Now, for the grip itself, make sure that you have your thumb and your fingers wrapped around the pole. You are squeezing the pole really tight. You have a death grip on the pole. If you let this pole go, this pole is going to disappear from your life. Okay? <laughs> so, death grip on the pole, pulling down, shoulders down and back, chest lifted, core engaged. We're going to walk around the pole for minimum 10 seconds, trying to build up to 30 seconds. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Then we'll do it on the other side, same thing. I won't do it on the other side. Well, actually I will because otherwise you guys are gonna think I'm cheating and I'm only doing it on my non, on my dominant side because if you know me, you know my left is my dominant side. So, arm high, thumb and fingers wrapped around the pole, arm pulling down, shoulder down and back, chest lifted, core engaged, death grip on the pole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. So back to the other side. We're always going to be alternating each side because we want to make sure that one side does not get tired over the other. When you start to get tired, that's something that will increase your risk for injury and I'm very, very, very big on prevention. If you're in pole, doesn't matter if it's been a short time or a long time, at some time in your pole journey, you will get injured. That's a guarantee. Everyone gets injured. The severity to which you get injured, it's gonna be different depending on what you're doing, but that's why trying to prevent injury is so important because if you are consciously thinking about preventing injury, then you'll minimize your risk of getting injured. So hopefully it won't ever happen to you, but most people have been injured at least once in their life as it relates to pull, possibly very minor, possibly very major. More on that later. Anyway, so back to our grip strength exercises. Second one, same positioning on the pole. Except this time, our inside arm, again, left arm, fit bit on the left arm, is going to be about shoulder height. Same death grip on the pole, same positioning, shoulders down and back, chest lifted, core engaged. You're going to be pulling with this arm 
away from the pole as you're pushing your body in. So you're creating your own amount of resistance between your body and the pole here by pulling and pushing at the same time. So pulling and pushing will create your resistance. Again, 10 to 30 seconds each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent job. Other side. Now my right arm is on the pole. Everything the same. Death grip, shoulders down and back, chest lifted, core engaged, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent job. So, and by the way, if you hear squeaking, that's my pole because uh, it's not damaged in any way, shape, or form. Don't worry. It's because I need to clean out the ball bearings. There's dust and cat hair underneath them that's making that squeaking noise occur. So they need to, I need to take the pole down, clean it, put some grease on them, and it'll be good as new. So don't want you guys to worry about my safety, so no worries. All right, last exercise. I have a ton, but these are my top three, especially if you're just trying to build up your grip strength. So we're gonna face the pole, one arm high, about face height, the other arm low, somewhere between chest and torso. It's gonna depend on your height and your body build, uh, how far the distance is between your hands, but generally speaking, somewhere in your face area and then somewhere in your chest to torso area. Uh, you'll know you're in the right spot if your arm is in a relatively 90-ish degree spot. So you don't want it to be an acute angle. You don't really want it to be an obtuse angle. You want it to kind of be straight on, as straight on as you can comfortably get. So we're going to do the same principles as before. Death grip on the pole. Remember, this pole is going to disappear if you let it go. Chest up. Shoulders down and back, engage your core, and you're going to pull your body in with your arms. So your arms are pulling your body in, but you're gonna push away with your body. So you're creating, again, resistance between you and the pull to strengthen that grip. So pulling with your arms and pulling away with your body. So it's two different kinds of pulling, but the pulling are going in opposite directions. So your body is going in and you're pulling with your arms out. So those opposite forces will create the resistance you need for your grip strength. 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good job. Switch, right arm on top now. Remember, that fits on my left arm. Same body positioning. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention it, but make sure that your body stays completely in line. So your head, neck, shoulders, chest, torso, hips, everything should be in line and engaged like you're in more of a plank position when you're doing this. That way you can protect your body and make sure that everything is engaged. Make sure you're also engaging your back muscles, squeezing down with your shoulder blades. So again, we're leaning away, pulling away with our body, pulling away with our arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Yay! You all did it. Your arms should feel a little bit tired and exhausted. That's totally normal, especially if you're just starting to get used to conditioning your grip. But doing these exercises a couple of times a week will go a long way to help you build up that strength to do all of those awesome spins, tricks, lifts, or just generally toning your upper body. Now, I'm gonna repeat this one again, just because I know the positioning and the explanation is a little bit confusing because you're pulling twice, but you're pulling in opposite directions, so that's why it still works to create resistance. So you're pulling with your arms, so you're not pushing away from the pull, you're pulling, you're trying to pull your body in. 
At the same time, your body is pulling away. So your arms are pulling this way and your body is pulling this way. So when you're doing one pull here and one pull here, those opposing forces act just like if you were pulling down and pushing in because it's really just the opposite. That's all we're trying to do is create opposite. As long as one force is going in this direction and one force is going in that direction, you're going to have opposing forces. You'll be stable and you'll be able to create your own resistance as far as strengthening. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on if this helps you especially. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of these videos. Make sure that you ring the bell because then you'll get notifications. And if you enjoyed these types of videos, please, please, please give me a like so that I know that this is some, a style of video you'd like me to continue doing. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Love you all.